Welcome to another episode of Crosstalk. My name is Kevin Tachi and I will be your host for the next 30 minutes. As you've come to know this particular program, at least that's the, the, the way that we have tried to build the program whenever we do one, and that is, is to use it as a facilitator of information when it comes to the two communities that we serve, both Whitman and Hanson, and, and it could be a variety of things that we sit here and we talk about on this program. Uh, whether it's about upcoming events, maybe it's to disperse information, maybe it's to talk about uh, upcoming polit uh, political situations, elections. Uh, let's not forget both towns observe town meeting. So uh, from time to time we have folks on to talk about that. And today we have, uh, he is the Selectman Chair in Hanson, Mr. Bruce Young, sir. Kevin, pleasure to be here as usual. Well, welcome back. Welcome back. This is the second time this year. Yeah. Uh, Bruce is here to, to chat with us about a couple of different things. It's kind of a to play catch up uh, on a couple of different things. Uh, where we're, we're going to talk about a, a variety of things that are happening now that are, are in in the works as we speak. Probably one of the first things we could talk about since the last time you and I spoke earlier this year was that the town was looking for a new town administrator, and uh, after uh, various conversations. I believe that you guys are this close. Uh, I, I don't know what the details are as far as uh, the contract with uh, the new town administrator, but uh, talk to us about the process of hiring a new town administrator and picking one. Yeah, we went through a, uh, a search process. We had a seven-member search committee that worked out very well. I was on it, uh, and there were, uh, along with the member uh, gentleman who's the chairman of the planning board, along with five citizens at large, worked out very well. Our town council was, was our ex officio member who gave us legal advice on how to proceed. And uh, we actually had 30 applicants. We put out a, a uh, advertisement for a new town manager uh, and we had 30 applicants. And the search committee reduced those applicants to uh, four applicants to go forward and present to the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen held interviews and they interviewed all four they reduced the selection process to two. And our new town administrator, I'm happy to say, is going to be uh, Mr. Michael McHugh, who is presently the town administrator in the town of Rochester. He has an extensive background in public administration. He's, uh, he's the former town administrator in the town of Avon, and he worked as an assistant, uh, administrative assistant to the Board of Selectmen in the town of Menden. Now, not only that, but you can add to that that he served two terms as a, uh, a member of the board of, elected Board of Selectmen in the town of Mansfield. And he holds a master's degree in public administration the whole nine yards. And he is uh, uh, what I called in my, in my uh, analysis of why I voted for him, uh, the best of the best. He's turnkey. He's ready to come in and hit the ground running, familiar with all those important areas of, of town administration, uh, procurement, uh, budgeting, personnel, and the whole nine yards. So I think the town will be very pleased with our selection. And uh, we've negotiated a contract with him, and the signing is imminent. What's the key to a, a good town administrator, somebody who is uh, somewhat of a complement to uh, the leading board in town, the Board of Selectmen? Mm -hmm. Of course, the Board of Selectmen are the policy makers in town. They're the elected officials who make policy. And the, board of, and the town administrator not only carries out that policy, but he does so in a way that he ad adheres to all the rules and regulations set forward under the Town Administrator Act mm. that pertain to the Board of Selectmen. So that person has to be uh, acutely aware of what his, not only what his powers are under the Town Administrator Act that applies to the Board of Selectmen, but also what his limitations, uh, his limitations are. So I think he, he he brings a, a great balance in those two things. Uh, he knows what the roles of a selectman are because he's been a selectman. He knows what the roles of a town administrator are. He has extensive experience in being a town administrator, and I think we're going to be lucky to have him. Okay. We'll look forward to more conversations on that yeah. as Mr. McHugh comes on board. Uh, probably another uh, tidbit of business, and that is... Uh, Status of uh, a uh, status of a st uh, statement. What is it? A statement of interest, and that is in regards to the McQuan School. I know it's something that's been discussed 
from time to time. Where does that stand right now? I should have added uh, one more thing about the town administrator. Please. That is, his first day uh, on the job will be May 9th, which isn't that far away. So uh, I just wanted to add that, and uh, we're ready to sign the contract with him, and that's imminent. As far as the statement of interest is concerned, yeah. on the, uh, the ongoing problem of the McQuan School, where uh, basically all, all of the, all of the, uh, the um, main areas of that school are in need of replacement, and I'm talking windows, uh, I'm talking uh, boiler, heating system, uh, electrical system, roof, the whole nine yards. Uh, the building obviously uh, needs to be replaced, and uh, because of that, we put forward a request to the uh, Whitman Hanson Regional School Committee and the superintendent to prepare an SOI. Only they can prepare the SOI because they're the school district, and uh, naming the McQuan School, obviously. And what we've come up with, basically, uh, for submission to the Mass. Um, Massachusetts uh, School Building Authority, yeah, authority yep. be better known as the MSBA, MSBA, is a process that will involve the following. And before I get into this, I'd like to tell you that we don't have, obviously, we don't have an overcrowding problem in the schools. Mm -hmm. What we have is a problem of surplus classrooms because of declining enrollment. So as a part of my suggestion and my cooperation and the board's cooperation with the school, what the uh, school, committee, uh, school committee and the superintendent proposed was there's enough sur surplus classrooms at the middle school to move grade five at the Indian Head, basically, over to the middle school, okay? Uh, move uh, classrooms, one in uh, classes, uh, second grade and first grade, over to the Indian Head School, and then uh, add an addition on to the middle school for um, uh, preschool and kindergarten. So they would, that, that is the plan right now going forward. Uh, we'll know more about that. That's been submitted to the MSBA for consideration to let us into the process. And if that process goes through and the M MSBA approves us to enter the, uh, what they call the core program of uh, financial uh, relief, then uh, we will go forward, uh, start, have a building committee, have a feasibility study, and eventually that will end up with proposals that would go before the town, uh, would go before the town meeting. But before that, those proposals would have to be submitted to the MSBA for, for approval for the funding. Once we get the funding um, okay, that would come back to the town meeting to be approved. If the MSBA does approve the, the SOI, what happens, and if they don't, what happens? Give me the give me the both sides of that coin. Well, we're hoping we don't have to. I don't have to answer the first one. Of course. We're hoping that's going to happen. Uh, if it does happen, what I uh, what I uh, just program uh, what I just said, you'd have to go through basically the same process we went through before. You get on the list. You, you get you get on the you're on the list now. You prioritize into the into the program. You you have a fourteen. You have a building committee. Uh, you have a building committee. Building committee decides how to proceed. They come up with various options. I gave you the priority yep. option. Yep. And uh, they would hire an architect, and they would hire a um, owner's project manager. Mm -hmm. And then working with them, they, the architect would come up with various, various plans. You know, you might come up with plan A, plan B, plan C, one being the expensive route, one le least expensive route. To submit for acceptance or for something that would be voted to on? To submit the for the acceptance by the MSBA. Right, which, which see ones, they would pay for it. Which ones would they, which ones, uh, these are the ones we'd like. Do you agree? If they agree, it comes back, we'll and town, it has to go to town meeting, just like we went before. If they, if they say they reject it this time, is it something that you have to resubmit? And, and, and well, you, you have two options there. You 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 could decide to to go it alone without their their, their assistance their, financially their funding because uh, obviously we need to replace that school. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm, I'm not saying that the McQuan School necessarily needs to be torn down as part as part of it. And if it doesn't have to be torn down, it can be repurposed for something else. That'd be nice. That would be great because it is a structurally structurally sound school, okay, and it could be repurposed uh, for another purpose. To, possibly put it either back on the tax rolls or possibly another type of educational facility such as the 
you know, the North River Collaborative runs. Sure. So there's always those possibilities that that building can be saved and repurposed rather than torn down and not become part of the part of the, part of the expense, okay. which would save the taxpayers a, a lot of money. Let's talk to uh, the time of year where the town does business, pays its bills. It talks about how it's going to spend its money for the new fiscal year, et cetera, et cetera. There are a lot of things to put forth. The priorities, the priorities of town meeting, which is going to be May 2nd. Well, I'm glad to report that uh, w due to the efforts of all of our department heads and uh, the Board of Selectmen, the Finance Committee, and our um, interim town administrator, Mr. Richard LaCamera, uh, we're, basi we're basically coming in, uh, coming in with a balanced budget, but I'll put an asterisk on that because that would be the next thing we're going to talk mm -hmm. about. Yes. We've come in with a balanced budget that uh, uh, keeps the town moving, keeps the departments functional um, and in good standing as far as all the services they have to deliver to the town and then taking all the articles, the money articles into effect. We've come in with a balanced budget that keeps us within the restrictions of Proposition 2.5. And uh, I, I want to applaud all the department heads, Rich LaCamera, and all of the efforts of the Finance Committee uh, and the other departments for uh, keeping the town within the limits while providing a, uh, uh, a good budget to keep those departments running and servicing the, the people of Hanson while at the same time keeping Hanson an affordable place to live. And that's where we stand with that, and we'll go to, we're going to go to town meeting with it on May 2nd. I believe every town meeting there are, and, and this is a, a question of my own, every town meeting you go in and you're like, oh, oh there should be a quick town meeting. I don't think there's going to be any articles that are going to oh. generate conversation. And every year, every, and I don't care what town, and I've c covered many a town meeting across uh, the, the South Shore, and there's usually one that nobody sees coming but generates a conversation. Do you see that happening this year at, at town meeting, other than what we're going to talk about in a few moments? Uh, geez, you know, I don't see anything that's controversial in the town meeting okay. uh, because there isn't going to be anything on the town meeting this year regarding the Plymouth County Hospital. There's no bylaw a, changes or anything? There's a study committee handling that. Uh, and the, they ha they're not ready to come in with, with suggestions for the, and we're not going to be talking about anything to do with the new highway barn that would possibly be going in up on Hawks Avenue because sure. you know the controversy that that, that developed. The town, light control property. Yeah. The light control property. The town chose to take the, uh, to accept the gift. Mm -hmm. They chose to go forward and. Uh, but that we, we, we won't be talking about that. This but year. we won't be talking about that. And those could have been some controversial issues there. Uh, are there any other controversial issues? Uh, we're looking f to put a uh, possibly a new roof or repair the roof on the McQuan School mm -hmm. because even though we're going to replace that school down the road, okay, uh, we have a constant leak. We're, we're forced with the, the, the old part of the building still has the original tower and gravel roof Goodness. that dates back to 1967, 68. So it's it sprung leaks. There's there's a constant leak. There's an off and on leak. Nearly Had a fifty. Year, leak. It's nearly a fifty year old roof. Yeah. So you're up there, uh, especially in the gymnasium, has a problem. You got to put buckets out while the kids are playing basketball sure. in there. So something has to be done with that with that roof to uh, to replace it. Okay. And we're looking to either replace it completely, and that would run maybe a little over three hundred thousand, or do something. Uh, to keep that roof from leaking for the next, uh, say, seven to ten years, mm. till we come up with a uh, a reasonable problem for the uh, okay. solving the McQuan School. So that could be the only uh, controversial area. Uh, that, along with possibly uh, uh, establishing the position of recreation director for uh, Camp Kiwani. Okay. Okay. Those are those might be some controversial areas. But other than that, I, if I can think of any that I forgot about in the course of this conversation, we can do that. How much time we get left? We got about, uh, about 14, 15 minutes left. Oh, good. That's Just enough time to talk about, uh, up from what I understand, is that there's a, an override yes. that's going to be discussed at this year's town meeting. Talk to us about an override. I mean, a lot of, I think, still to this day, folks don't get the full concept of what an override is. An override situation means that the town has been put in a situation of uh, requests for budgets mm -hmm. and acceptance of budgets uh, that 
that puts you over the limitations of Proposition 2.5. And, and the limitations of Proposition 2.5 is this. You cannot exceed your tax levy base, meaning your entire tax levy bill, John Q. Taxpayer Town of Hanson, by more than 2.5% of, of the prior year, plus any new growth. Right. So if you're in a situation at town meeting and articles, a request that exceed that, then you have to go for an override, okay? Right. And that's the type of situation that we're in this year. Right. It's an override situation. And it's not a debt exclusion. Debt no. exclusion is usually for capital oh. projects, and that goes away. Yeah, over, yeah. This is something that when you do an override, unless you vote an underride, which I've never heard of, yeah. it's, it's, it's permanent. Yeah. It's, what's, it's, it's what's there forever. It's, it's most like well, people like to put it uh, in a cynical way. I don't like to use this one, but an override is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Okay, so if you vote a million dollar override, uh, not only is it stuck in the tax base uh, forever, but it actually compounds. Right. It's like compounded interest, and multiply that at two and a half, like a mortgage. Multiply it at two, uh, or, a lo or a loan is a better example. Multiply that at two and a half percent compounded annually, at two and a half percent forever, mm. and it's in your tax bill. Goodness. What has caused this? What has caused the uh, the the request for an override, a Prop 2.5 override? Uh, the Whitman Hanson Regional School District uh, uh, basically uh, has to certify their budget every year. And when they certified their budget this year, it came in at roughly 9, nine or 10 percent above last year. Mm -hmm. And that was due primarily to what they call the student success portion of their, of their budget. They have a student success po portion of their budget that requests uh, 32 new, about 32 new positions that weren't in the budget last year. Okay, you have a copy of it there. Uh, the, all those positions add up to about 32 positions. Uh, and actually, they're going for uh, full-time, uh, no-cost kindergarten, uh, tuition-free kindergarten, full-time, no-cost kindergarten. Um, a couple of um, social workers, they're bringing back five librarians. They're, they're going to... Uh, add some positions to library and music and, and safety and security, uh, new, new textbooks, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And that all adds up to $3 million. Okay. And of that, Hanson's portion will be 1.3. Hanson's 1. portion 3. is 1 million, I know this by, figure by heart, $1,241,141. And now, now we get into the interesting thing. Who puts an override on the ballot and who has the uh, the sole authority to put an override question on the ballot. That is left up to the Board of Selectmen, who, who basically can either vote, one, to put the override on, two, not to put the override on, oh. two, for, for any reason they want, to reduce the amount of the 1,241,000, say to eight or four, oh. because they might think that it's, it's too much all at once for the taxpayers, or they can have a tiered approach to an override question, which means they could give the voters a choice between the 1.2 million, 800,000, 400,000, 200,000 as a tiered override ballot question. But before you do that, you have to go to town meeting and have what they call a contingency override article for the town meeting to vote and appropriate the $1,241,000 portion of the regional school budget right. contingent on a ballot question to take place at the May 21st annual town meeting. And that's basically it. Town election. Ta I'm sorry, town election. Right. So it has to go to the town meeting first, be approved there, and then it goes to the ballot question. Now, next question, and let me anticipate it, okay. <laughs> what is the biggest confusion between a ballot, what, why, why do the people feel they are there at the town, the, the, the town, town meeting. meeting. What are they doing at town meeting? Well, the town meeting question will actually ask the people if they wish to appropriate the $1,241,000 right. for the purpose of funding all of those things I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And all of those things I mentioned will be in the informational section of that article. So to be totally transparent, that's what, that's what created the need for a, an override question, okay? And most people, if, if I want to use the word uh, obfuscation, what you will, you will, and you hear this at every town meeting when there's an override vote as an article, people will say, well, let's just vote 
the override question, because the only reason we're here, ladies and gentlemen, is to just take that, take that 1,241,000 and give the rest of the town the opportunity vo to vote on it at the polls. Mm. Wrong. The reason why you're there at town meeting is to vote to, ex to, vote to fund that appropriation. You're not there just to take it to the ballot. And, and also the other articles in both the special yes. and annual. And, the, uh, and, all, the ba and all of the, uh, the, the budget the, the budget the requests from all the departments. Right. You're there to fund everything. Right. The only difference between that is that if, if the town meeting votes to fund the $1,241,141, it, ends, it, it, it uh, validates the budget, uh, the, uh, the ballot question. The voters go to the ballot question, but they're not the appropriating authority. All they're doing is vote to exempt that 1,241,000 from the limitations of Proposition 2.5. And, right. and that's all they're voting for. They're not voting to fund it. Is it too soon to be putting forth another Prop two and a half override. Did we not do one last year? For was there not one done last year for one point four million dollars for for technology? Was it last year or the year before? That was a uh, that was or a was that a capital expense? What was that, me? that was a debt exclusion? That was a debt exclusion, a five year debt exclusion in Hanson. I think it was a capital exclusion, if I'm not mistaken, okay. Whitman for one year. But we we took the approach that because we were we were funding the the um, the roof on the Indian Head School, we didn't want the taxpayers to have to pay for that all. Okay. <laughs> so we spread it out, the spread out the, uh, what, what the tax so that, situation. So that's, an, that was an override, but that was a, that was the example there, of right? a debt exclusion. And that, yes, and stuff. that amounts to about, I think it's 133, But that'll eventually go away. Yeah, we're still paying for that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's the story, that's the story on, uh, on the override. And keep in mind, the $3 million um, increase in the assessment to the two towns. We do not at a town meeting vote on the Whitman Hanson Regional School budget. We vote on the assessment. Okay, right. the Whitman Hanson School budget is, is for between forty-nine and fifty million dollars this year, up from about between forty-five and forty-six million dollars. We don't vote on that. What we do vote is on our share of the budget after you subtract Chapter 70 funding yep. and any other, uh, f any other funds that are available to the schools to offset our assessment. What if, what if town meeting this year, both at Whitman and Hanson say, yeah, we don't want this override. Is that it? Is it, is it done at town meeting? Uh, and what happens, what happens as far as the monies that the school district is seeking? Give me that scenario. Well, you have to understand that before we get to this article on the ba on the on the town meeting warrant for the one million two, yep. we will have already voted the assessment. Uh, the the assessed what we feel we can afford in the assessment, which would be what three percent, four percent, a three and a half percent increase over last year's assessment. Right. So that should be a done deal before we get to the article. So it isn't like the schools are going going away without anything. They're going away with a three and a half percent increase. Now, you mentioned that if 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 uh, both towns don't vote for this, or one town votes and one vote. It goes back to the school committee, and they decide whether they want to, A, resubmit the original override, mm -hmm. uh, override amount, or whether they want to uh, uh, recertify their budget and their assessment uh, somewhere in between, or recertify it for the amount that the uh, two towns appropriated. What are you hearing from people on this? We've got about five minutes left. What are you hearing from people who who have been watching this process going along. What are people saying to you, Bruce? Well, they're very passionate on both sides of this issue, okay? A lot of people saying, well, it's too much all at once. They're going for all or nothing. You know, they should have gone for a lesser amount and brought, maybe brought it back. And other people who just have the, don't like overrides completely because I think people should live within their budget. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, there, there's a very passionate group called the um, uh, Support Our Schools group who's formed, and I, I, they actually have formed the ballot question committee uh, in the two towns uh, to promote this. And there, a lot of them are, are parents, new are parents uh, with school-age children who want to give want to give more for education. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great thing. So you have a lot of passion on, on both sides of the argument. So I'm hearing it from both sides. I would think, and I've dealt with enough override I issues, you have people who are, you have people who have their children's schools and they want the best for their children, but then you have people 
who are on fixed income. Absolutely. They might yes. be retired. And yeah. they're like, on, listen, my income hasn't changed in, you know, in, in five years. I don't know if I can be able to afford this. Um, well, I'm don't sure forget the people on Social Security aren't getting an increase this exactly. year because we had minus inflation. Exactly. So, uh, and and uh, so uh, they're actually losing money because they have an increase in their Medicare that comes right out of their Social Security. Okay. So you have you have passion on both sides, both sides of this yeah. argument, and I have respect for both for both sides of the argument. So I asked you as far as if this is defeated at town meeting, is it the same scenario if? On May 21st, which is a Saturday, it's devoted. If it is voted down at uh, at, at that election, that it, it goes back to the school committee yes, yet again. Yes, that's under Chapter 71 of the Mass General Laws, uh, and they they get to decide. They get to decide what they're going to do with that. They can send the same thing back, you know, or they can send something in between, or they can accept uh, what the towns have done. We got about three minutes left. Anything that we haven't touched upon, whether it was this this issue or any other issue, that you want to take a couple of moments just to kind of chat about and just kind of remind folks about. Oh, gee, that's a good one. Um, are there any issues that I want to remind people about? Yeah, or just re re-emphasize anything that we've we've discussed in regards to. Geez, I didn't meeting. expect you to have any time left here. We're very, you're very efficient here, so it was, it was, we were able to kind of go through everything and, and touch upon everything. Jeez, let me see. You can't think of any issues uh, right off the top of my head. Um, you can always tell people how important it is to show up at town meeting and, and well, uh, there make is, their voices heard? There is going to be an election, too. Uh, we do, I don't think we have that too many people vying uh, for positions this year or whether there's too many contested positions yep. this year. I think we, we have a couple people retiring from the Whitman Hanson Regional School Committee. I think uh -huh. there's Mr. Ford and uh, Mrs. McSweeney. And there's two, there's two people that are running in Hanson, uh, Michael Jones, mm -hmm. and I believe uh, Christopher Howard are running okay. to, re to replace those. So uh, good They're luck to those gentlemen. Uh, and are, are, they, uh, are they vying for one seat or are they I, vying I for the two open they, seats? I'm not sure whether they have any, uh, any competition or not. But good luck to them, and, th and thank you for uh, thanks to them for getting involved. We also have a couple of situations where people have not taken out papers to fill positions, I believe, on either the Board of Health or the Planning Board seat. So that we'll we'll need we'll write -in. a bit of a write-in. We'll need some write-in candidates, which is unusual to have write-in candidates uh, for elected positions. So we're looking for people to mount write-in campaigns because you need at least, I believe, you need at least five votes to get elected. So if you were, you could, if you were a Hanson resident, resident yeah. you could come over there and, and uh, get five write-in votes and get elected. Wow, it's that simple. Yeah, what and, we, and we also usually have a, uh, a candidates forum that happens. Uh, at Town Hall in that's the Selectman's that's office. sponsored by the uh, Republican and, and Democrat town committees. And that's always neat to go to because I'm sure there'll be some talk about the override too because that's part of the election this year. Well, I want to thank you again for joining us. Always a pleasure. We'll have to have you back after, maybe we'll have you back after the, uh, after the elections. Yeah, I mean, we can, we can sort through the detail of, uh, you know, what, what, what went on in the aftermath. Sounds like a plan. Hey, until next time, thank you for watching Crosstalk. Have a great day. Yeah. You might have had enough time to be able to.